Hey everyone, Kenji Lopez Alt from Serious Eats here, and today we're talking about freezers. Now, freezers are great for long term storage, but they're only useful if you can defrost food in a timely way and with minimal loss of quality. So, what's the secret? Well, the two enemies of frozen food are air and time. So, the longer something takes to freeze and defrost, the bigger the ice crystals that form inside it, and those jagged ice crystals can cause cell damage to food, which makes your vegetables turn mushy and your meat turn wet. Meanwhile, too much exposure to air can lead to sublimation, which, nerdy aside, is the direct phase change from a solid, in this case ice, to a gas, in this case water vapor. And that causes freezer burn, and nobody likes freezer burn. So the key to better quality frozen food is to freeze it as fast as possible with as little air exposure as possible. And that means freezing flat, like this. Now let me show you how to do it. Now, take a look. I've got two identical quarts of water here. The only difference was the way in which they were frozen. One of them was frozen flat in this bag, and the other one was frozen in a cylindrical deli container. Now I'm gonna leave them out at room temperature and let's watch what happens. Both batches look like they're melting well, but after 45 minutes at room temperature, the ice frozen as a cylinder has produced less than a cup of water. Meanwhile, the ice frozen flat has produced over two. It's melting and freezing twice as fast. Now, to freeze a solid or semi-solid like ground beef or chili or a thick stew, you want to start by transferring it to a zipper lock freezer bag. And you specifically want to use a freezer bag because regular zipper lock bags are air permeable. Take the bag and flip the lip over just like this so that it stands up nicely and you don't get the lip gunky. And then transfer your food directly to it. And make sure you wash your hands after handling raw meat. Now you want to take your bag and get the meat down into the bottom corner closest to the zipper end and then zip it up almost, but not quite all the way. You wanna leave about that much open. Now put it back down on your board and push the air out, starting at that corner and working towards the open end. Once you get to that very top corner and pretty much all of the air is out, seal the bag up. Now spread the meat out until we've got a nice, even layer. Label it, and we're ready for the freezer. Now for liquids, we're gonna use a nearly identical process. We're gonna start with a zipper lock bag. We're gonna open it up, flip the lid upside down. I'm just gonna pour my soup in and that lip is gonna help it keep its shape. Now I can close it up, seal it almost all the way, leaving just that last little bit over. Starting from the bottom right corner again, I'm gonna start pushing the air out of the bag. And just as that last bit of air gets pushed out and the bag's about to leak, I seal it up. The great thing about this method is that it makes for good organization as well. All of your freezer contents stack for easy visual access. And where's that soup again? Ooh, that was easy. Now when it comes time to defrost your food, transferring it to the refrigerator for the night works, but it takes a lot of time. Some people recommend running it under cold water, but where I'm from, we don't like to waste water like that. So what I recommend is using one of these, an aluminum baking sheet. Now, aluminum is one of the best conductors of energy in your kitchen. At room temperature, it'll help you defrost your food up to two times faster than on the counter or on the cutting board. That's important for quality and for safety, not to mention your busy schedule. The cool thing is aluminum isn't just great for this flat packed food, it's also great for things like steaks, chops, frozen chicken, frozen shrimp, whatever you wanna do, just place it on an aluminum tray and it's gonna defrost in record time. Now, with all these tips, you're ready to organize your freezer. Probably just gonna have to throw everything out and start from scratch, right?